What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp quick tip for you. So first of all, I want to apologize, my allergies are killing me, so if I sound a little under the weather, um, I'm, I guess it's just allergy season and that's just kind of the way it is, but we'll go ahead and push through this thing. So in this video, we're going to talk about using inferencing with the rotate tool in order to uh, be able to do some different things with that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So as most of you know, um, you can use the rotate tool to not only create or to rotate things around a center point, you can also use the rotate tool to create copies along an arc. So if I was to come out here and draw a circle like this, um, and I'll go ahead and give it a little bit of depth with the push-pull tool, we'll go ahead and make it a component. If I had an object like this that I wanted to rotate around the origin right here, then what I could do is I could select this object, I could activate the rotate tool, um, and the rotate tool is found either right here on your uh, sidebar, or you can activate it by tapping the Q key with your object selected. But I could take this object and I could rotate it in a circle around this center point really easily just by clicking on this center point. Well, the other thing you can do with this is you can also create a copy by tapping the control key. So if I hit the control key, you can see how it's gonna make a copy wherever I click instead of just moving the object that I had selected. So what I could do is I could, if I wanted to, I could create a copy that's 30 degrees along here and then type in times 10 or times 11 to make 11 copies at 30 degrees each around this circle. I can hit the enter key in order to uh, finalize those copies. So that that's something that we've kind of talked about before and uh, it's definitely very powerful. It's something that you need to know how to do because it makes your life a lot easier. You can do the same thing with the move tool. But one of the things that I think um, I talked about this in a video on Monday is not only can you use the rotate tool um, when it's on the same plane as an object, but you can also set your center point anywhere along the anywhere along the blue axis. So like for example, if I wanted to, instead of setting this right here on this center point, I could do the same thing all the way up here on the blue axis because it doesn't really matter where I set this from an up and down standpoint because you're rotating this along the green and the red axes. So it's more of a left right issue as opposed to an up down. So like for example, if I set this center point up here, and then I move my mouse out here so it's got on the green axis, I can hold the shift key to lock this to the green axis. And you can see how now it doesn't matter where I move my mouse button to. Um, you can see how this point that I'm setting is along this green axis. Well, what you can do is if you hold that shift key, you can move your mouse down here. And honestly, you don't even need to hold the shift key in this case, because I can just click on the center point and you can see how it's still gonna rotate this in the circle, but it'll still keep it at the same height. So I could do the same thing. I could tap the control key. I can make a copy along a 30 degree angle and I can type in times 11 and hit the enter key. And you can see how I get the same result, even though I had clicked way up here in order to do that. And so the other thing you can do with that is let's say for example, that I've got a shape down here below. So let's say I've got this octagonal shape down below well, if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to make a copy of this object along every, so that it kind of lines up with every point of this octagon. Well, all I'd have to do is select this object and then uh, activate the rotate tool and then just move my mouse down here so that it locks to this uh, center point on this object. And then I would do the same thing. I'd click on this first point, I'd tap the control key and then I'd move this to this point right here and then I'd hit times seven to create seven copies. Well, you can see how I was able to use this object as kind of a, I was able to use this object as kind of a guide for where I wanted things. So you can do that and you can use different objects as guides without them being on the same up down plane. So, and then the other thing you could do, and I'm gonna go ahead and undo that, but let's say I had a second object down here So once I activate the rotate tool, let's say I did the same thing and selected this object and then use the center of this. 
octagon as kind of my base point, I could come down here and I could use the second octagon as the rotational guide. So you can see how I was able to use this top octagon as my center guide and then the points of this lower one as my rotate guides. So once you kind of figure out that you can do things on different planes like this, it really helps you with a whole bunch of your different options and stuff like that. So and what that allows you to do is that gives you a whole bunch of different interesting options for the way that you can come in and model things. Like let's say for example, I could come in here and I could create a circle and I could push pull it just like this. I could make this a component, so we'll just call it large cylinder. And then I could make copies. So, and then I'm gonna scale that down a little bit, but then I could make copies using this octagon as my base point and by using this as an inference object oops. I can just keep making copies of this moving them up and I'm you can see how I'm centering all of these along the center of this octagonal shape. But all I'm doing is I'm using that inferencing that we were talking about off this same point. And what you can do is you can really make some interesting shapes by doing that. So now I could take this, I could create a copy, and I could move it along this blue axis. And you can see how once you get the angles right, you can create some really interesting kind of spiraling type shapes. So that's kind of an overview of using inferencing with the rotate tool. Um, leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Did you like this workflow? Did you know you could do this? I just love having that sketch up conversation with you guys. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new sketch up content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider visiting my support me page. That's the sketchupessentials.com slash support. That's got everything from some extensions you can purchase to support the show to some links to my Patreon page. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.